Eight men in their 70s stepped out of a van in front of a converted monastery in New Hampshire. They shuffled forward, a few of them arthritically stooped, a couple with canes. Then they passed through the door and entered a time warp. Harry Como crooned on a vintage radio. Ed Sullivan welcomed guests on a black and white TV. Everything inside, including the books on the shelves and the magazines lying around, were designed to conjure 1959. The men didn't just reminisce about what things were like at that time. On the other side, a control group did that. They were instructed to behave as if it were actually 1959, while the control group lived in a similar environment, but didn't act as if it were decades ago. They discussed historical events as if they were current news, and no provisions were made that acknowledged the men's weakened physical state, no, one, carried their bags, or helped them up the stairs, or treated them, like, they were old. A week later, both the control group, and the experimental group, showed improvements in physical strength, manual dexterity, gait, posture, perception, memory, cognition, taste sensitivity, hearing, and vision. Most of these improvements were much more significant in the group told to live, as if it were actually 1959. A full 63% of them had better intelligence test scores at the end of the experiment than they did at the beginning, compared to 44% in the control group. This is a summary of a 1979 experiment by a Harvard psychologist Ellen Langer called Counterclockwise. It was not academically recognized because it was a small sample study conducted over a mere five days with plenty of potentially confounding variables in the design. But the takeaways from her study remain compelling that mindfulness is important and placebo effects cannot be discounted. Therefore, we must never forget that our own expectations, and the expectations of others, work strongly on our minds, and bodies.